On today's walk, we've got Medieval Earthworks, the Offers Dyke of the Peak District, the Great Itch. So here we are, this is Baton Gate, the old Roman road, and Pebble Castle in Cape Town. on Pindale Road. So the weather gods are smiling on us today. It was absolutely lashing it down this morning. But now it's uh, blue skies. So I'm glad I had a lie in this morning. I had my croissants for breakfast. Uh, as I said earlier, anyway, lots of history on this walk. I was doing a bit of researching because I thought I need to go on a local walk. I don't feel brilliant particularly, but you tell. So um, I've done a bit of research and uh, we're going to go and see the equivalent of the Peak District's Offers Dyke. So we're going to head over through Hope Cement Works into Bradwell. Then we're going to bob along on the old Roman Road and then back down a classic view down Cavedale, which might be a bit slippy today, but that should be good fun. Some lovely scenery there. Anyway, that's what we're doing. We're heading on Pindale Road. So we'll crack on down here. Love it or hate it, there's a Hoax Cement Works which has been in this valley for well over a hundred years. But we'll talk about that when we go through because we're going to pass through the Cement Works. A bit like I did on my first ever video well over a year ago. Somebody's been building a den there. Hopefully that's kids. I used to love building dens when I was a kid. Don't know about you, but I spend hours and hours and out in the fields building dens. A few trees down as well by the looks of it. Not sure whether that's just disease or wind or a combination of both. But in a moment, we're gonna walk through this bad boy. And I'll give you a bit of an update when we get there. Drinking on the job. <laughs> so here we are. Hope Cement Works. I'll spin round in a minute and uh, you'll see how impressive this is. So this has been here for well over 100 years. I think the original Cement Works was built in 1906. The current one, 70s and uh, produces 25% of the UK cement and I think the license is due to expire in 2043 and they're already like surveying and asking locals what they want to do with a site once it's done but my view was you know turn it into some sort of nature park or outdoor activity place so that's my view but yeah it's a huge site I don't know if we go past the quarry today, but if we do, you'll see it. It's just absolutely amazing. But the footpath runs right away through the middle of it. Huge facility. Uh, a bit part of the landscape now. It's a bit marmite with people. You know, some like it, some hate it. I think it's been here that long, you know, and it uh, provides a lot of um, economy for local people to work at. There's not much else around here, if we're brutally honest apart from tourism. But yeah, look at these big conveyors. Fascinating. As an engineer, I always find this stuff really interesting. But yeah, it's a huge site. You can see through there. Just the scale of the thing. I'll see if I can get some aerial shots off the interweb. I won't fly my drone around here. I'll probably have all sorts of cars pull up and <laughs> ask me what I'm doing. So I'd be a bit sensible. 
Okay, but we're going to follow the footpath through this whole site. Huge a quarry. I did a walk, say my first walk in over a year ago now that I did when I started filming these things, and I did it through here. So I'll put a link to that. You can just see the scale of the quarry in that. Absolutely huge. But yeah, look at that. But you can't see any of this from the road apart from the chimney, which a lot of people like when they take a cloud inversion pick. I'll put a couple up. You know, it just like appears above the cloud with a smoke coming up from the chimney or steam, whatever it is. I suspect it's steam. I would have thought. But yeah, fascinating. If you like that sort of thing. <clears throat> but yeah, the path takes us straight through here. And then we're going to look at something a lot, lot older. Once we get through this. Don't think we didn't worry about the headroom, do we? 13 foot. Now I've got a big head, but it's not that big. Clearly they didn't work on a Sunday. Or do they? I don't know. These large sites, you don't tend to see many people around. What I want to do is find out when they do blasting in the quarry. Because that'd be cool to film. But yeah. We're just coming out the back end of the site now. On last week's walk around Navio and that. You'd have seen the back end of this. So, anyway, we're going to crack on down here. I'll put some facts up about it, but like I say, 1906 was first built. Something ridiculous, the amount of tonnage, uh, millions of tonnes of uh, cement it produces. And like I say, 25% of the UK cement production. So, huge. But we're going to pop down now, start the walk over towards Bradwell. Just leaving the back end of the site now. You can see through there some of the rail. I do want to catch that one day, but yeah, you can see look at graffiti on there. But yeah, that's where they load it up on the, onto the trains and that. Um, I just need to work out which one I'm going down. I think, if I remember rightly, it's this one. So that's the broader way. This is the footpath up to Mitch Low which we'll talk about when we get up there. This lovely little path here. Like a tunnel, isn't it, when it's all green and already starting to sprout leaves. It'll look great, this one. Not sure what that is, looks like uh, Hawthorne, I think. But yeah. It looks a bit shitty, doesn't it? <laughs> Sludge and run off. Look at that big hopper thing, conveyor belt there. It would have poured just into there and then scooped up by the looks of it. Amazing. And right, there's a bit of a hill here now. So I'll take some pictures and whatever. Bit of an embankment there. Could be part of what we're going to see today. I won't say too much in a minute until we get to see it. But we're just about to arrive at Mitch hello. Uh, but this could be part of what we're going to see. There's four bits of it. So we'll see you in a minute. So this is Mitch Low, which is a natural escarpment, the west end of the Office Dark of the Peak District, known as the Grey Ditch. And here it is, the western end of it. This is a natural feature, not an artificial one, but was the end of, I think that's part of it down there, the end of a sort of grey ditch. Behind me here, behind me here is Mitchlow Lane. So this is Mitchlow. This takes us down into Bradwell, and then we're gonna go and look for the grey ditch. So this is uh, Shatton Moor up here. That's a really nice walk up there up to, I think it's a Robin Hood stones and stuff like that. I did a walk again. i will try and put a link up, you know, the old card thing there, but nice walk from Bradwell round there, off to Moor. It's quite quiet, bit of a climb up, but once you're up, nice steady going. And it's a, you get some stunning views up there across the Hope Valley and over towards Eam and Breton and, and the like. 
we're going to follow this glorious little country lane, Mitchell Low Lane, uh, down into Bradwell. A stone right in the middle of there that's been repurposed as a sort of old gatepost at some point in the past, but it does make you wonder if these were already there, maybe something more than that, and people have just repurposed them. But that's just stood in its own now in the middle of the field, but you know, the shape of them doesn't make you wonder, doesn't it, if they were. There's a lot of history in this area, 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 going back to Mesolithic times. They've, I'll talk about a bit more, but they found flints and Bronze Age stuff and all sorts. This whole valley is people have been present for thousands and thousands of years. But that over there, just took a picture, is an old quarry of some workings of some type. On the walk before I went up there and over to the quarry, we're going to go down here into the village and then out and follow the old Roman road for a bit called Batham Gate, but I'll, again, I'll talk about that when we get onto it. We're now going to cross this flood. In the centre of Bradwell now, this is the beggar's plot playing fields. I'll try and find out why it's called that. There'll be something behind that, you know. There'll be some reason. But they have a nice carnival on here every year. We've just come, that small dale there, we've just come through there. And then uh, we're heading off down here now. And heading off over towards the brook to uh, find out the Grey Ditch. Bradwell, um, there's a couple of thoughts on its name. One is it comes from Broadwell because of the broad ditch it was here. Some of the people think it was called Brad's Well, whoever Brad was, but no one knows. Um, to the locals, it's called Bradder or Bradders. So if you're ever around here and someone goes, I'm off over Bradders or Bradder, then they're talking about Bradwell. A lot of history in Bradwell, been here since many Mesolithic times. They found flints, uh, they found Bronze Age axe heads. British Romano, just down the road here on my last week's walk is the Roman Fort of Navio and Batham Gate, which is the main Roman road from Buxton to Navio, passes straight through here. In the Doomsday Book, it was under the ownership of a couple of Saxons, I'll put their names up, I can't recall, but um, the next time you hear about it, it's under the, the uh, auspices of uh, William Peveril, who was one of the big Earls, one of William the Conqueror's mate. I read a really good book, I put a link up to it, called The Norman Conquest. That was really interesting how they, they came over and basically just expunged Anglo-Saxons from all sort of ranks of aristocracy and all that sort of thing. Really interesting book, that. Nice little playground there, we won't film that, otherwise people might think I'm a nonce. Uh, but yeah, we're going to head down out here, cut through this estate, onto the fields over there, and find this Offers Dyke of the Peak District. This is Bradwell Brook, runs through the village. Let's see if we can catch up with that in the village later. Beautiful. I'm not sure if we can get down here onto the footpath, but we'll see. Some little piglets there. Looking back over towards Bradwell, we just come across the brook and we're going to follow this path over to the ditch. But look at them little beauties. Cracking shot of the Hope Cement Works in front of Mam Tor. Going over to Holland's Cross, Back Tor, Lewes Hill, and Wind Hill. And we're heading down here now to the uh, site of where we were headed today. And then we're going to head back up over there, so a bit of a climb coming a hill. <laughs> but uh, I'll catch up with you when we get there. But I think I can see some llamas or alpacas, I never know the difference. One's nice, one's a terrorist apparently. But I can see some of them in the field over there. Like someone said on Twitter, you clean your boots, you know you're going to end up in a bog fest. And uh, that looks like where we are now. Okay, now. Really? Whoa. So did I. That's why I thought. The little squeeze style here. And then there's a couple of. I'll find out what they are. I'm not too good on llamas and alpacas, they look very similar. But uh, you can see another style over there. 
and that's up onto Shatton Moor, which goes around to Abney Moor and Offerton Moor and back round. Like I said earlier, it's a really good loop, but yeah, got these two little ones here. I think they might be old packers. They seem to be all the rage these days, don't they? We have a cracking little squeeze style and a goat there. And a little lamb. First one I've, I've seen a few driving around, but first one I've seen on my walks this year. You're not bothered, are you, mate? Hey. I've had the mud gets. This is actually, look at that. This is actually a, a floodplain for Bradwell Book. Book, book. Here we are, look at that. This is the Grey Ditch. So, I'll get some shots of this, because it's fascinating. So this is like the Offers Dyke of the Peak District. Various things, it was built in the Dark Ages. Some people go to the medieval. Well, it's the Dark Ages, mate, that's what it's always known as. Rebellion Knoll up there is where it starts. Runs all the way through Bradwell, there's about four sites up to Mitchlow where we were earlier on and allegedly onto Mam Tor and this they believe was a, an earthwork defence it cut right across this valley basically so that um, it's sort of like a defensive earthwork and obviously controlled the road there the old uh, Roman road so this was built around 4 500 AD they believe a boundary between Northumbria and Mercia uh, and it was the Angles and Saxons, or some also believe it might have been built around the time of the Vikings before they took over the whole north from the Dane Gold, and it could have been a barrier for that. But in its day, it was 22 metres wide and 8 metres high. Um, so, yeah, just look at that. I'll get the old uh, Hover X1 up in a minute. And on previous videos, you've probably heard of the story about Lewes Hill and Wynn Hill. Edwin of Northumbria was on there. King Wallace, I think his name was, was the Anglo-Saxon king on this side. They went to try and attack uh, King Edwin up on the hill there. They had some defences, you can see them when you go up there, like a, a wall. And they pushed the wall down and apparently that's what uh, gave them victory. The other story that goes here, the tree is no longer here, but a tree called the Eden tree. And apparently King Edwin was captured and hung from that tree and executed. So again, lots of legends about that here, but you can definitely see this line, the earthwork line here, look. And this is the ditch on one side. Obviously the guys on the other side were higher up. They excavated this and they've dated it to around that time because there was some Romano British pottery, so about four or 500 AD. But in this whole area, you, you go back to the Stone Age, early Stone Age and before and beyond. So, you know, fascinating. I'm gonna go and get some pictures of this now, but you can imagine this would just control the whole valley because Mitch Lowe is where it ended. But I say there's there's some people who propose that it went all the way to Mam Tor, but there's no real proof of that. But this stretch here is 1.7 kilometres long. And again, it's around that time of things like Offers Dyke. So there's some historical precedents there as well. But yeah, just look at that. And the footpath goes through the middle. There's no livestock here, so I'm gonna get a few a few shots with a Hover X1 while the wind's quite low. So, I'll catch up with you shortly, but this is called the Grey Ditch. So guys, that is the Grey Ditch. So glad I found that. Fascinating history. And you can see a definite line of it. So, we're now gonna go up into Bradwell itself. And from there, we're gonna go and find the old Roman road of Bath and Gate. Follow that for a little while. And then we're gonna cut over to the Limestone Way. But yeah, fantastic bit of history there. If you love history, mate, follow my channel, like and subscribe. We can also see here, not easy, but that's medieval ridge and furrow, I suspect. If you ever see a field like that with loads of ridges and furrows, nine times out of ten, that's medieval or earlier ridge and furrow. That's how they used to farm the land back then. This is also the floodplain for the Bradwell Brook. You can see it down there, hence the bogginess. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to head now 
into the village where the church is and then we're going to head out and uh, start to climb up and over the top of Old Moor. Here's the same Bradwell Brook over there, traffic lights. That was the Bradwell Gap. We came through the other week. Door Decker got through there somehow. We're heading up through the village now. We might stop and have a bite to eat at some point. Double decker through that bugger. Another cool road sign. Got to find out the history behind these street names. Another one there, Hollow Gate. Could be a hollow way. Not sure, find out again. But we're headed up here now. Lovely little quaint village this. There you go. George and Post Office Box. Probably George the Six, I'm guessing. Chapel there, 1754. Quite a big history of reformers here. The Presbyterian, Wesleyan, that type of thing, quite common up here in the hills. But yeah, the old chapel. Glorious little trackway. I'm making some height now. <laughs> See the moor again across there. But yeah, whew. up at the top for some water. The poor pie, I think. A hell of a climb. I think there's all most of the climb today. I think it's about a thousand foot. I think we're doing it at the moment. That's Lee's house here. I think not far now, and then head over the top, over Old Moor onto the Limestone Way. Once you've seen a bit of the old Roman road, clear locals have been up here on the bikes. You could hear them in the distance. They'll be all over that place, all the top of there. Old lanes and roads and that. Fair, fair point as long as I'm not hurting anybody. Used to do a bit myself <laughs> back in the day. Stunning views though. We're well above a Bradwell now. Just about to come up on where that wall is I think is where the road is. Oh it's here actually. See some bikes there. Lovely views now across the Hope Valley. Wind Hill. I think that's Bamford Edge. That's Bamford down there I think. And then you've got Stanage Edge in the background and all the others over the back there. Stunning views. Come on, made some climb there. We were down there about 20 minutes ago. Not too bad for saying I got, I think I got chest infection still. It's not being too bad, but yeah, that's the bulk of the climbing done now, I think. This is uh, Wyvern's house here. It's looking old, got that ivy on that. Stunning old building. But we're following this road here, meets up with a lane over there, um, and then we're going to head off to the left onto Baffham Gate. Just caught a buzzard there feeding, it took off. I don't know if I got a picture when it's on that wall, two of them, but I think these jackdaws are chasing them off, which they tend to do. Crows and jackdaws, they don't like them. But look at that stunning building there, man. I've got a couple of pictures of that. But yeah, quiet now, I've hardly seen a soul all day. These little back routes, I was really seriously thinking of maybe doing a bit of a little guidebook on walks on Castleton because I've done that many now, I could probably fill a book. And you know, obviously there's your usual ones up over Mam or the Great Ridge, but there's so many little backwaters around here, you just won't see a soul. So here we are, this is Baffham Gate, the old Roman road. That we're going to follow up here now for a bit. That goes all the way to Buxton. I've got a good book. I'll put a link in the thing and put a description called uh, Peak Clans Roads and Trackways, I think, something like that. I'll put it up, but I'm starting to plot out all the local roads around here, like Bathamgate, which is a Roman road, there's Doctor's Gate. There's at least three 
go from Brough in Navio the Roman fort so we'll do that um, I'm planning all of those and I'll probably do them over a couple of nights or something but yeah this is the old Roman road so it just makes you wonder don't it, you know legionnaires coming across here with Navio down there protected the lead mining routes in and out of this area uh, to control the local brigands and whatever. The Pexeton tribe lived here for all, for the people of the Peak. That's why it's called the Peak District, after the Peak Seaton tribe. So I think the Brigantes were to the north, so there's a lot of, uh, they never really controlled those guys for a long time. So, but uh, yeah, so we're following the steps of Legionnaires. The ones that uh, built the Navio the second time round were from the southwest of France, called the Aquitaines. So yeah, really interesting, but just to imagine that you're walking in the same footsteps as Romans. And, and a lot of these trackways, they would have been built on existing ones, uh, prehistoric trackways. Again, there's a famous one that runs through this area called the Portway, but there's a few of us. But they would have kept to the ridge lines because of the, that time a lot of the land was forested, quite difficult to navigate. Going up on the ridges was the easiest way. So you'll see a lot of these roads, even though this is a a Roman road, it was probably built on top of an existing trackway, so you're talking going back thousands of years to Neolithic and Bronze Age, Iron Age and even before. It just fascinates me that you're walking in the same footsteps as people from five, ten thousand years ago. Daffodil, daffodils are out. First ones I think I've seen. Spring is here. Meteorologically, but soon it will be next week on the 21st, the vernal equinox. Oh yeah, look at that stunning view. And you can see how this is a Roman road, look, straight as a die. <laughs> like an old quarry. And here, some all the old open cast mine workings, which will go back potentially to Roman times. They came here for the lead. And obviously there's a lot of salt routes through this area as well. There's one that came through Bradwell Brough over to Bamford and onwards up towards Templeborough, places like that. Fascinating. Oh, a bit more of a climb. And I think that's about it, hopefully. So I'll meet you when I get to the top, so I'm going to stop for a drink and a bite to eat. Bugger me, that's a steep hill. <laughs> I'll work out what the incline is. So we've been climbing for quite a while now. Not really much of a length from it. I think we're about to hit the peak here. I fucking hope so anyway. <laughs> I've done a big steep hill like that for a while. The last few walks have been a bit flat. But uh, all or nothing. A cool building here. An old barn. I'll explore that when we get there. Paradise Farm. Living out here would be paradise. Well, it is because I live out here. <laughs> it's like an old pit there or something. An old dew pond, probably, by the looks of it. But uh, yeah, you can see Mam Tor on the Great Ridge here. In the background, you've got Kinder Scout, Grindslow Knolls there. You can see that. Quite a landmark right across the Hope Valley. Stunning. I'll get a picture of that, I think. Baffin Gate goes off to the left now, over there. And we're gonna go up here. squeeze style in the middle of nowhere. Used to be an old wall here, I guess. But stunning views. I love it every time. It's a nice little walk after work, this. If I come up from Castleton, over the back there, doing an hour or so. This is Dirtlow Rake that we're running parallel to. 
that's an old uh, lead mining workings. Been there for donkey's years, we just walked parallel to that. And we're just heading up here. I mean, Mam Tor's rammed. The whole of that great ridge will be rammed. You know what? I've seen all this soul here. So quiet and peaceful. Not many sheep out, I'm assuming they must be in for lambing at the moment. It's about that time of year. But yes, yeah, a peaceful beer. The odd motorbike blatting about, but not seeing a soul. So like I say, I think I'd probably put a little guidebook together. Let me know what you think below. Walks a bit off a beaten track around here, not the sort of mainstay of uh, the area, because uh, there's a lot around here that's quite busy. So I'm thinking of doing the walks on Castleton. Let me know what you think. I can't find many guidebooks on it. There's a few leaflets, but not many books. I think there's one by the Dalesman's, the only one I can find. And that's been out of print for a while, so... Yeah, moving it over, let me know what you think. If you can hear that, it's a curlew. First one of this year, shows they're back. They'll be starting to get ready to nest. Be out on that moorland somewhere, if I can hear it. Lovely sound, beautiful birds. Very hard to get close to. They'll tend to dive bomb if there's a predator nearby flying up and dive bombing, trying to distract it from where the nest is. Quite common on ground nesting birds that. Skylarks do a similar thing. <coughs> we're just heading just across these fields here. And then we're going to catch up with the road a bit over there. And then back down the last stone way. Probably a couple of miles left now. Can you hear them? Love that sound. Some old workings there, look. Quite deep that. So then curlews over there. Beautiful. Combination of the old and the new there. <laughs> but I wanted to squeeze through that mate. People must have been a lot thin about them. We can see the path going over there, then we'll hook up on back up onto the road then for a little while. Star made from a couple of old railway sleepers there. <laughs> a couple more pits there. This place is littered with them. See, Mam Tor broody there with Kinder in the background. We'll have to win hell there. But yeah, I'll have to get back up there soon. I want to do a walk over Hollands Cross up um, Ringing Roger, and there's about four aircraft wrecks up there, all quite close together. So uh, I want to do that uh, when I'm a bit fitter. <clears throat> but uh, we're heading down here, I'm going to catch hold of the limestone way and back down Cavedale. So loads of skylarks out, get them chirping away, curlews. Spring is definitely on its way. You can see Olden Hill just in the distance there. That's quite a nice walk again, I've done that before. Over down Ox Rake and back round, that's quite a nice little walk. I think you can see Coombs Moss over there in the distance. Again, did a walk on that and found a V2 wreck a while back. I think I've done everywhere around here. <laughs> Never a bit of a hole in a quarry there or something. We're just coming down to this crossroads here and then we take a right down Cavedale. I'm trying to use the Hover X1 quite a bit because I've unlocked some new modes. One is a sideways mode, which would be quite good. And then the other one is uh, hand signals so you can change modes without having to recall the drone back to you. So uh, that'll be quite cool. So you just do like certain things with your arms and it'll have a do an orbit, because at the moment you have to go and send it out, do whatever the shot is, come back out again. But this one, you can switch modes while it's out there. So it'll go back to a central point, and then it'll do zoom in, zoom out, uh, orbit, bird's eye. You can do it all from hand signals. So I've given the G, there really are rolling out quite a lot of updates to it at the moment, which is good. So again, the side one will be quite good as well for a bit of a B-roll. So, looking a bit black over Bill's Muffers, as we say, around here. Around here? Hello there! How are? Let's have a pirate or West Country. A very poor attempt at both. But anyway, yeah, you can see the footpath sign. We're headed down here now. And I'll try it out down Cavedale. Hopefully that's uh, dry, because it can get a bit wet and slippy down there. Uh, the other week we had about two or three call outs of the mountain rescue to Cavedale. People had clearly slipped on ice or whatever because it is very, very slippy down there. You've got to take your time.
tourist views there, Wynn Hill, and you can see Derwin Tedge in the background. That's a cracking walk, and Stanage and Bamford over that way. Lovely walks over there, done quite a few videos on them. But we're just going to drop down into Cavedale now. Stunning. You know what, all this all about? I thought it would have been busier up here. Cavedale's normally packed out, but it probably will be when I get down the yard a bit. <laughs> People don't tend to want to do that bit, do they? So, uh, yeah, you can see it winding its way down there now. And then we'll do a bit of an update there. What a bog fest. <laughs> we're headed down here. Um, yeah. Sometimes you just got to fucking go for it. It's any mud. After all, look at that stunning shot there. Lewis Hill. Straight headers and back tall just to the right. Cavedale, you can see the castle just poking its head up there. We're going to wind our way down here. There we are, Peveril Castle in Castleton. This is Cavedale. This is part of the Limestone Way, which is another good long distance walk that I plotted. About 48 miles, 46 miles. Do that in about three days, started off in the south of the Peak District. But yeah, look at that cracking view, cracking view. Built in somewhere between 1066 and 1086, this was built. So one of the earlier stone and uh, Norman Castles, the keep was definitely built in 1086. William Peveril owned it, then he went through various hands, Henry II and all sorts. I've done a video on this, so I'll put a link up at the end to that, but uh, yeah, really fascinating site and a really you know, well captured picture there. the remnants of the old paved roadway here. Obviously long gone now, most of it. This would have been a track straight through. Cave Dale itself, which is where um, Matt Smith stowed his wife's head in, in the House of Dragons. There's a bit of a spoiler there. Climb up down to those caves, but I don't think we'll risk it today. This is Cave Dale where it opens out. I think that log is over where Matt Smith um, did the deed in the uh, House of Dragons. Oh, look at that, just fasc fascinating, isn't it? It opens up from that little gorge into this lovely wide dale. There's caves to the left, and that some of those lead down to the peak cavern or Devil's Arse. <coughs> but yeah. Great place in summer for a picnic. Superb. Be a bit of a bugger to get into that castle, I'll tell you. Why, oh fucking why? It makes my fucking blood boil. This is where Cavedale comes back into Castleton. It's about the slippiest bit, to be honest. It's like a big sheet of limestone. <laughs> it's fucking lethal. But uh, I'll catch up with you now and I get back into the back to the house. Here we are, 
just going back into the village now for this little gorge back home. Here we are, back at the cottage. Great walk, that over to Bradwell through the cement works, sort of grey ditch. That sort of barrier against the uh, Vikings or Northumbria. Bit of legends around that, then through Bradwell itself, up to the Roman road at Bath and Gate. And then back along and down the Limestone Way through Cavedale. Absolutely great little walk, that, about seven miles. Took me about three and a bit hours, I think. So back home now, I had to put my feet up because I'm still not recovered from this bloody bugger. And uh, that was about my limit there, I think. Anyway, crack on and we'll see you next time.